pleasure to welcome Lubna Ahmed. She is a young budding entrepreneur who got a PhD just barely a year ago at 24. She is now 25. A very successful entrepreneur, I must say, in her own right. Although this is her first venture in Boy Technologies, they do some awesome technology, and we will talk about it. Lubna, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Libna, just as a reminder, let's catch up where we left last year. Um, we have some great technology going on. If you can play it out for the audience one more time. Sure. And we'll build around the entrepreneurial skills. Sure, let's do that. Envoy is, um, Envoy is a medical device company. We're located out in Chandler, Arizona. And uh, Envoy was, was, was uh, started with an intent of developing and, and producing to patients a set of breath-based detectors for health management and for early disease detection. So most people think about breath analysis, and you might remember this from last time, they think of the alcohol and DUI breathalyzers, but what we're focusing on is measuring other things in human breath that have implications for monitoring health and disease. How far advanced are you guys in terms of putting the product down? Uh, we're we're pre-revenue at this stage, and we're pre-FDA clearance, and in our industry, you have to obtain clearance from the FDA before you market. Um, we have done extensive design and development work, and so we have, you know, we have working prototypes and things of that nature. And we're very excited about the stage that we're at and, and the level of our, the level of uh, development on our technology side. So this is just like a regular breathalyzer, but you can measure, for example, your sugar levels. Your, you know, uh, can it go beyond that to your fat content, etc.? There are a number of different things that you can measure in human breath. So speaking generically for just a moment, talking about breath analysis in general, there are over 200 things that have compounds that have been identified in human breath. And they correspond to many different disease states. So you've got things like uh, fat metabolism, you have things like creatinine levels, which is useful for dialysis patients and patients with renal failure. You have compounds um, that correlate to different forms of cancer. And all of these things are present um, a present in human breath. And what we're trying to do is develop devices that can, that can monitor a number of those different disease states in a handheld unit. Okay. And do consumers, you know, get this, when, whenever they get this in their hands, they do it themselves, or they, they need some professional help to get this monitored? Um, that's still something that we're working out. But the model as it currently is designed involves use by physicians or by prescription. So it would be something that would be you know, buyer for the order of a physician. Let's uh, come to the entrepreneurial skills that it takes to start a company. And obviously you need uh, a stimulus, uh, you have to have passion to start with. And going back to you know what you said last night when we were here, uh, it was something that you went through personally that gave you the impetus rather to, to start this. So right. let's talk a bit about that as well. Um, yeah, uh, you know, starting starting Envoy off wasn't, uh, it was certainly, I said, a challenge, and I, and I honestly don't think it's, I think the challenges get worse as time goes on. They just get, they get harder um, as, as you move forward. But but starting off, Envoy was started um, as a result of a childhood condition that I had, which, you know, I have outgrown. But um, but basically having um, spent a number of, of, of years in and out of a hospital, um, pinpricks were very painful and something that I really didn't like very much. And there were a number of other patients that had things far worse than I ever did. Um, and developing something that was non-invasive, that was painless, that could help people manage and monitor their own health was very important to me. And that sort of started the, the idea into non-invasive detection, non-invasive disease management, and then hence the breath-based detection approach that we are currently pursuing. I think you've got a good role model for me to understand, for a lot of uh, budding entrepreneurs to understand the cycle of entrepreneurship. Since you're doing it already, I think it's good to learn from you. Uh, once you get the idea, obviously through your uh, journey that you went through as a child, how do you take the idea and then try to put it in a business perspective? Um, I don't think there's any one answer for that. And I think that every entrepreneur and every company has its own story. And Different people had different types of, you know, to use your term, stimuli that, that caused them to go down this entrepreneurial journey. Um, in, my, in my case, I came from an engin I had an engineering background, so my, my PhD is in biomedical engineering, um, and that was where I had my training. To move a company forward, one of the things that you need, you, you need, certainly need strong, you certainly need a strong product offering and things like that. You need to have strong engineering, um, but you also need to have 
the business management skills, you need to have the, the finance arm, you need to have the marketing side, you need to account for legal issues, you need to account for things outside of engineering. And in, in, in our particular case, um, one of the first stages of you know, the quote-unquote company evolution was bringing on board the other members of the management team to help build and create the infrastructure that was necessary to move forward with the company. Um, and in addition to, in addition to that, um, you then had to start, once you have those other people there, managing them efficiently, in my case, required that I learn. I learn things outside of my core area of, of, um, of education in my, in my schooling. Um, you know, so to use a personal example, on the case of finance issues, uh, in the case of marketing issues, I actually went through and obtained you know, personalized tutoring at a high level from people that were you know, kind of industry veterans to sit down and go through and make sure that I was able to understand the kinds of issues that I would need to make decisions about in running a company. And you know, as we brought together the team and, um, and as I kind of you know, increased my own understanding and, and, and knowledge associated with business management, I think things went a lot more smoothly in terms of expanding the business and, and maturing it into other areas and, and causing it to grow and better become its, its own self-sufficient entity. So let's take a couple of areas where I think you know, entrepreneurs face challenge. <clears throat> One is obviously you know, you're building a team. You have to have the right connectivity with the right kind of people you want to bring in as a team. The other important area is bringing in mentors. Right? You have the industry experts mm -hmm. or finance experts or entrepreneurial experts. So you need those people to connect with, to help you along the way. A third aspect, of course, which is very critical, is uh, the investment aspect, where you approach the right kind of people. Because a lot of people will be interested in investing with you, but you may not necessarily be willing to take all that money from everybody that approaches you. There have to be some sort of synergy. So if I'm going to just dissect, you know, this couple of three different areas, and if you can elaborate on how you personally, you know, went through this. Um. I think what's very important, especially like in my case, this was my first company, and this was Frank, it's my first job, you know, with, outside of school. Um, bringing on mentors ex is extremely important, you know, and making sure that you don't make the mistakes that many other people have made before you. I mean, there's certainly a level of autonomy and independence that you need to have, and a certain level of, I'm going to tackle the problem and get out there and do what I need to do to move this forward, um, that you need to have. But in addition to that, you've got to pick and choose your battles, and you can't reinvent every wheel. Mm -hmm. So bringing on board the appropriate mentors early on is very important. Um, in doing that, in mentor selection, I think it's very important to find people that have been there, done that, but that are also willing to let you go through it and do what you need to do. There tends to be, especially for startup companies, a disproportionate number of mentors, and I mean this with the utmost respect, um, that that will come in and they'll tell you what to do. And instead of it being a dialogue where you're providing perspective, it's, it's a more, this is what you need to do, you can go do it, as opposed to a dialogue between two people where they're working on improving and sharing their experiences, et cetera. So selecting the appropriate mentors is, um, I think, is a very important thing uh, to do and to do first. As it goes to team, the reason I think the mentors come first is because to bring on a good team, if you happen to be surrounded by people that are very talented, then you know you you have an advantage that a lot of people would truly envy. Um, oftentimes, selecting your management team is going to require that you move outside of your own circle, and that you bring on people that you don't personally know. And in order to do that, and in order to take the kind of risk that is involved in bringing people onto a management team without having any quote unquote data on them before, you need to come in with a strong recommendation and a strong referral. And that often happens by having somebody that's in your trusted network make a recommendation to somebody that's in their trusted network and then for you to still bring that person on on a trial basis, hire them as a contractor first, work with them as a, you know, a contractor, consultant, whatever, something like that, get to know them and then, you know, because when you hire somebody in a startup company, you're making a pretty significant, whether, you know, regardless of how it's contractually written out, you're taking on a significant investment in, in terms of that particular individual. So you need to make sure that the, the team is well done. For investors, um, to, to your last point, I think it's the same thing. Um, certainly companies are starving for cash right now, and certainly bringing on investment capital is something that many companies want to do. Um, once you've brought on an investor, that's a relationship that you've got for life. You have significant fiduciary obligations to these people, 
and they are, like it or not, they are your family, and you have to take care of them. And when you're taking on that kind of an obligation, you need to do your due diligence on the investor just as they do their due diligence on you. You need to bring on the people, in my view, that, um, that are going to be supportive, that are going to understand that companies go through their ups and downs, and um, that, um, that, that you're going to be able to work with moving forward. And I think that selection of the right people, somebody once told me, you know, business is all about people. It is. It just boils down to people. And whether it's your mentors, your team, or your investors, um, I think making sure that you've got the right people and that you've built and invested in those relationships is very important.